Hello, BookTube. We're continuing with my library tour for 2024, for reasons that surpass all understanding. <laughs> we are on bookcase number three, we are on shelf number two, and we are about to do subsection A, which I'm hoping we can get through uh, in one video. I really don't want to split subsections up. Uh, so let's see, let's see what we have here. Okay, the first one is in the tradition of Conan. <laughs> it doesn't have to say it for it to be true. This is Del Dowdell, and this is Spearman of Arn. Just a, what I would gather is a generic sword and sorcery fantasy novel. Uh, we have uh, Robert Silverberg. This is Conquerors from the Darkness and Master of Life and Death. With that terrific cover, he, he has just killed that creature that is now belly up in that pool of something or other. Uh, and any any kind of a paperback edition of Robert Silver is fine by me. I don't come. I don't counter many of them, uh, so I grab them when I can. Uh, okay, then we do have a block. Good, that will help. This is uh, Dale Van Every, a terrific writer, and he writes uh, much in the way of Alan Eckhart. He writes what I'd be more likely to call American frontier fiction than Westerns. I, I think the, the, he's much more along the lines of frontier fiction. I have a bunch of them here. Uh, the Voyagers, this terrific cover artwork there. We have The Shining Mountain. Uh, this is, I don't think this is going to take a read. I will try it this summer. Uh, we have Westward the River. All different cover designs here. And finally, The Scarlet Feather, with, with a, a, a cover that tells a story. He is he is being bombarded by arrows. They haven't hit him yet. And he is telling her to run to the safety of their log cabin. Uh, so there's, there's a batch of Dale Ever Van Every. There's more of him. And, of course, there's nonfiction. He wrote a great work of nonfiction as well. Uh, but let's just move on. Let's deal with what we have. Okay. Here is an old science fiction paperback. Oh, these are all going to go in one place. These are all going to get moved. Uh, this is by Roger Zelazny and Fred Saberhagen, and this is called Coils. And it also has a Howard Chaikin cover, uh, much like we saw just the other day, right? We saw, <laughs> I almost want to grab it if I can. We saw a Howard Chaikin fantasy novel cover just the other day. Maybe it wasn't yesterday, because it doesn't look like it's in reach. Uh, then we have, uh, in terms of covers, we have Boris Vallejo. This is The Mercenary by Jerry Pornell. Military science fiction of a pretty high order. Uh-oh. Oh, goodness. No, no, no. All right, this is nonfiction. This does not belong here. This is uh, from the Pelican History of England. We saw a couple of those volumes in the last bookcase. A multi-volume history of England that Pelican Books put out, where they would tap an author and say, we'd like 200 pages on this subject. The author knows perfectly well that a single aspect of one year of that subject is a subject for 200 pages. So instead, they write fleet books, quick, nimble books that are usually long on aphorism and short on analysis. <laughs> uh, and that's definitely the case here. This is Dorothy Whitelock. This is the beginning is of English society. Uh, and then there's another one here, uh, Roman Britain both of them in, in this series, but I'm going to set these aside uh, because these don't belong here. They belong uh, wherever they're going to end up. They belong together with the other Pelican histories of England. Uh, then we have a mass market paperback, a timescape paperback of Gollum Raised to the 100th Power by Alfred Bester. I recently found a hardcover of this, which is great. It means that I'm, I'm less likely to be heartbroken if this thing breaks apart. Uh, the old timescape banner up there guarantees you a good read, but I was guaranteed of a good read for this thing anyway, because Alfred Bester is great. Uh, and <clears throat> he wrote two of these these later novels, Gollum Race the Hunter's Power and a book called The Deceivers. And I am just hoping, since I encountered the mass market paperback and the hardcover of this, I'm hoping that the uh, used book gods will see fit to just provide me with the mass market paperback of The Deceivers or the hardcover of The Deceivers or both. That would be great. One thing I don't particularly want, I've had it before and it doesn't hold up, is the trade paperback of the Deceivers. And I'm not sure that the Deceivers ever had a mass market, so maybe that'd be the only game in town. Uh, okay, then we have a book by Roland Green called Wandor's Voyage, another in the tradition of Conan thing going on here, I'm gathering. 
Uh, we have Edison Marshall. We encountered Edison Marshall uh, last time. Yes, we saw Yankee Pasha. Uh, and this time we see Caravan to Xanadu. His, he wrote big historical novels, well-received historical novels. I'm not sure how well a historical fiction reading audience in the 21st century would warm to these. They're very much 20th century productions. But this is about Marco Polo, a big fat novel about Marco Polo. Uh, oh, great. Then we have uh, The Planet of the Apes. But this has a mass market cover that I longed to find. You can find a million different editions of this, of this book, but not with this cover. And I finally found the cover I want. I don't know why. I think it's just that it impressed me the first time I read it. Uh, okay, then we have another block. This is Eric von Lasbader, who a lot of you will know from his uh, sexy 70s espionage books like Gian or Ninja. Uh, but he started out in science fiction and fantasy, and he did a series called The Sunset Warrior. Uh, and <clears throat> I found the trilogy from, who is this? Uh, Berkeley? Is that what this is? Who does this series? Berkeley, yeah. Uh, this is, I found The Sunset Warrior, this terrific artwork that just wraps around there. You've got a creature coming out of a vat there. This is... Uh, far future science fiction that is so far in the future that much like Jack Vance or Gene Wolfe, it's it's a mixture of science and fantasy. We have uh, The Sunset Warrior, Dai San, and uh, Shallows of the Night. And uh, it's a, I haven't reread the trilogy in quite some time, but I really enjoyed it when I first read it. Uh, then uh, Frank Herbert. This is The Dosadi Experiment. I like all of Herbert's, almost all of Herbert's non-Dune novels, uh, which is reason enough to grab this pretty mass market paperback. But I, I confess, part of the reason that I grabbed it is that I was hoping that it would grease the wheels. Sometimes you need to do that for the used book gods. You grab something that you're not wild about because you want the other things like it. I would like the whole set of Frank Herbert mass market paperbacks of the non-Dune books. I'd like all of them. <clears throat> and uh, I found this one. I haven't found any others, but they'll come. <laughs> In their own time, I'll see them. Okay, then we have a mass market paperback of Rohinton Mysteries, A Fine Balance. Big, fat mass market paperback of uh, <clears throat> a modern Indian novel that I like more every time I revisit it. And there was a while there when I was getting a lot of opportunities to revisit it, so uh, we'll see what happens this time. Ah, Okay. All right. Uh, well, we have contemporary fiction, a great work of contemporary fiction. This is Larry McMurtry, uh, but it's not Lonesome Dove. Larry McMurtry is in that very, that very sparse population of authors who wrote two great books, <clears throat> two genuinely great books. He, of course, is the author of Lonesome Dove, but he also wrote Moving On. Now, this, this old, uh, is this 1970s? It must be. It just must be with a cover like that. 1970 itself, yeah, 1970, so 50 years old. Uh, I'm not sure how this would take a read, this mass market. I mainly got it because I fell in love with the book this way on a spinner rack at a drugstore and, and uh, think it's great. Um, a lot of McMurtry's novels are really good. <clears throat> a lot of the other novels that he wrote, aside from these two, are really good, but these two are great. They're great American novels. I wish that Moving On were as well known as Lonesome Dove, but... <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Uh, okay, this is uh, Saikaku Ihara. This is Comrade Loves of the Samurai. <laughs> this is an old uh, Tuttle paperback. Uh, I have this author in a couple of different translations. This is a classic work of the scholarly brother, the, the warrior brotherhood of the samurai and their fondness for teenage boys. Uh Given the historical moment, this is a largely iniquitous historical moment, but given the historical moment, I could really do with a new translation of this work, a translation of the whole work, the complete work, with a new introduction, new notes. Surely we'll never be in a more opportunistic historical moment for it than now, and that would be great. Uh, some of these stories are quite touching. Uh, oh, okay, then we have uh, Edwin O'Connor's book, The Last Hurrah, Recently in this library tour, I don't think it was in this bookcase, maybe it was in the last one, I showed you a copy, oh no, it was a Brattle Hall. 
I showed you a copy of All the King's Men by Robert Penn Warren, and I mentioned in that video, as I always do, that it's one of the two great political novels in American history. And I always have a note of confusion in my voice when I say that, because America is such an intensely political country. You'd think there'd be a lot more than just two books that are truly great. Uh, but no, there are only two. There are a couple that come close. Uh, but in terms of absolute just greatness, no, there, there are just two. And when I mention that about uh, All the King's Men, inevitably... I get questions from people. I got questions this time, but what the other one is, it's this one. <laughs> it's The Last Hurrah by Edwin O'Connor. Uh, whereas uh, All the King's Men is deeply Southern, gothically tragic. This is wry and comic, but they are definitely two sides of the same coin. Uh, and I, I, again, as with uh, moving on, I fell in love with this book in this format, this paperback. So I... Uh, I always want to have a copy, even though I have it as an ebook. I would probably read it that way if I wanted to reread it. Oh, there's another Pelican book. All right, this doesn't belong here. This is nonfiction. This is Joachim Kahl. Uh, let's see here. Do we have a translator listed? N.D. Smith. This is The Misery of Christianity. <laughs> An excoriating romp through the, the iniquities of the Christian faith. <laughs> it's a, it gets a little bit tiring. It's not a long book, but it gets a little bit tiring. But boy, oh boy, even in translation, it is mar remarkable to read. Uh, okay, then we have a novel. This is Boris Pasternak, Dr. Zhivago, in this great old signet paperback uh, that I love. I think it's, I love the, the edition. It's fantastic, but it doesn't belong. None of these things belong together. Uh, well, that's one of the, that's one of the benefits of doing this library tour is that I will, I will take all this under control. Uh, oh, okay, and then we have another block to finish up, so this won't be long at all. This next block is Mass Market Paperbacks of the historian Bruce Catton. So, talk about not belonging here. Half this stuff doesn't belong here. I, we have uh, just a stack of these Mass Market Paperbacks of his, which do hold up to a reread. I've read some in this format many times, so I don't have any doubts about that. We have Never Call Retreat, This Hallowed Ground, uh, Terrible Swift Sword. These all have these photographs on the cover. Uh, the Coming Fury. And A Stillness at Appomattox. Uh, so, not all of them, but close to. <laughs> all in this uniform format, which is, again, the format that I fell in love with them for. Uh, I'm going to put these, but there you go. That is, uh, that is it. <laughs> that is uh, the next shelf here. Okay, so we are making progress. We are slowly making progress towards the summit. We have a summit again for this bookcase, like we did for the last one. We'll just we'll slowly get there. That's all. Uh, so we'll uh, we're gonna keep going. Uh, we'll do the next shelf next time. So I'll wrap this up for now, and I will see you then. Thank you, booktube.